Ciao, friend. This is Esther. This is Alfred, and I have one wish, is that you people should listen to us 30 seconds before the cameras roll. <laughs> we have the <laughs> funniest <laughs> conversation. You guys, we, we should have one of those outside third or second camera set up so they can record everything that we're doing. But I got to tell you, we should be doing recording in the car as well. Anyway, welcome to you, me, and Sicily. We're going to talk to a Sicilian born in Sicily in Nicosia who's here visiting in Acitrazza in just a little bit. We're also going to take you inside one of our favorite bars, Eden Bar. And uh, what else are we going to do? You gotta, you gotta listen to me point, point pontificate about various and, me shaking and sundry my head. items. I have. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. Anyway, it is hot and humid here in mid July. We thank you for joining us, and uh, let's talk about Eden Bar because in each one of the locations that we go to in Sicily, each one of the little towns, we have our favorites for everything. And Eden Bar in Acitrazza is for sure our favorite for a little granita. You also so like the kebab, great coffee, great dessert. What else? Listen, I want to say one thing for the record forever right now about Granita, okay? Just one thing. The province of Catania, flat out, their Granita is vastly superior to any other of the other provinces. You opinion. won't believe this by a hundred percent. It's agree crazy. with you. It's almost like creamy. It's really the, you know, for example, the mandorla, the almond, or the pistachio it has a, a creamy consistency. It's almost like a gelato. In fact, um, our friend today was asking, "Is that a granita or a gelato?" Because it was so sweet. Yeah, so I can we say something? There's yeah. one other thing about that, and then one. we could do talk about whatever you yeah. want. In some provinces, the so-called granita, you know what it tastes like. A 7 Eleven slurs. All right? <laughs> Terrible. Come Let me give you a hint. Val had a good point. If you get a granita with a straw in it, it's not a granita. And the Eden right. Bar is near the top. I of, agree. Okay, top five in the province of uh, Catania. For in the province of Catania. And also I like not the toasted almond granita. All right, so That's without further say. ado, let's start out with Alfred and Val giving us a little bit of, uh, well, Sicilian gestures. We'll go inside the Eden Bar and then listen to my conversation with Val about growing up Sicilian, coming to Sicily, and so much more. All right, well, we're not taking a picture. Oh, we're take a picture. Val from Nicosia and Alfred from Trecastani, I want to know and see how you Catanese do the Amonini. Okay, so Amonini means let's go, let's get out of here. Amonini. Show us, Alfred, how Amonini. do you do it? And when we eat and we like something, buono, buono. And what other Sicilian gestures? Can you show us? Ma che cosa fai qua? Ma che cosa fai qua? Everybody does this, right? Ninja, you know ninja. Huh? <laughs> what else? Give me another one. Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? Wait a sec. What does that mean? Ah, uh, vaffangulo. Oh, there you go. You heard it here, friends, on You, Me, and Sicily. We are a family-friendly video, but, you know. Watch out the mafia is around. <laughs> Ooh. All right, that's enough. That's enough. That's that's enough. enough. That's the trade secrets. <laughs> what do you have to say about these guys? Oh, I think they're pretty cool. <laughs> I do, too. <laughs> All right, we stopped in at Eden Bar to get a little bit of a granita, and I just can't resist showing you what they have. Great lunch stuff, chow, and sweets, and here we go with the gelato. Alberto, saluta a tutti. Hi, ciao a tutti at Eden Bar. Hmm? The Eden Bar. Saluta the Eden Bar, Okay, here we are. We're going to go. Interessante. Il caffè americano, a qua parte non è mettere, metti soltanto del ghiaccio a parte. All right, look at this. I am a and I am a kid, granita, mandola tostata, and there is the mulberry. That's my favorite one. 
Val Campione, originally from Nicosia and Palermo, right? Yes, originally from uh, Nicosia. Uh, my parents immigrated when I was five years old, uh, presently living near Houston, uh, Texas, and here for a basically a family vacation. For the 15th time you've come back here, uh, right? Approximately <laughs> the 15 times, yes. Uh, I still have my native roots uh, growing under my feet, so I like to come back here as often as I can. Uh, tell me a little bit about growing up in the United States as a Sicilian. What was that like? Well, growing up Chicago. In, in Chicago, I grew up in Chicago. Like I said, uh, my parents immigrated when I was five years old. And the, the first thing I remember is uh, uh, going to a nursery school. And uh, obviously, I didn't speak any English, so that was a little tough. But uh, one of the things that I remember uh, is that uh, my mother <clears throat> asked the nuns, what do the kids uh, eat for lunch? And the nuns told them, well, a lot of kids like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So my mother, the first day that she brought me to the nursery school, she made a little brown bag lunch with uh, uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And when it was time for lunch, I opened mm. up the bag. How did that go down? And I'm looking at this, <laughs> what, what, the, what is this stuff? <laughs> Took a bite of it and it just it wouldn't go down. So I, I wrap it up and hit it under a rock no way so, so that and, nobody would know that I, I didn't eat my lunch and so did you go home and tell your mom no more no basta more peanut, no basta more peanut butter and jelly sandwiches <laughs> and so tell me a little bit about growing up as a sicilian so the as a other child thing that uh, i remember is that uh, while um i was there i was uh, about six years old and i became ill so I had to stay home uh, for a period of time, and uh, I kept watching Howdy Doody and uh, I Love Lucy, and that's basically how I learned English, just by watching the uh, TV shows at, at the time. Want to hear something funny? When I moved to the United States as a child, that's exactly what my parents did. They sat us down in front of Mr. Rogers, Sesame Street, and had us watching English and that slowly, Boy, slowly, it really helped. It's amazing how it works. It's amazing. And so you stayed in Chicago and worked? So I stayed in Chicago, went to school in Chicago, went to university at the Illinois Institute of Technology, got a degree in mechanical uh, engineering, and went into that field of, as my profession. When was the first time you came back to Sicily after you left? So the first time I was 19 years old. So it was a trip with uh, just my father and myself. And uh, we met up with the relatives uh, in Palermo and Catania. What was that like? So that was great. I mean, I obviously had not grown up with these relatives, but it was like coming home and they were family. And uh, we had a great tour of uh, Sicily, just driving around the various uh, cities, spent a lot of time in Nicosia and Palermo since that's where my relatives lived. What about your grandparents? Did they go with you? My grandfather actually was still here in Sicily. So he was the only living grandparent that I had when I came back. Um, and that was great because he was a farmer. He lived in the city of Nicosia, but he would go out to the farm every morning on his donkey, and uh, I got to go with him uh, several times with the donkey, and that was uh, fantastic. And did your parents speak about Sicily as you were growing up? They did in terms of uh, uh, recounting stories about relatives and, and friends. and. Uh, did they miss it? Of course they miss it, but uh, kind of another twist to the my whole story is that my mother actually was born in Chicago so her family uh, were Sicilian immigrants who immigrated to Chicago when my mother uh, well my mother was born in Chicago and then during the time of the uh, depression her father or my, my grandfather decided he wanted to go back to Sicily so he brought his whole family back to Sicily uh, with three kids, 
Uh, he had a fourth child when he went back to Sicily. So they were four in the family. And uh, it was funny because then my mother met my father. Here. Here in Sicily. They got married in Sicily. And my father's dream was always to go to America. <laughs> <laughs> They're so, both reverse immigrants, huh? They, they are. So he finally persuaded my mother to go back, which initially she didn't want to. Yeah. Uh, because she knew that uh, growing up, her mother worked, and it was kind of a tough life in America as well. But uh, anyway, uh, my father persuaded her, and uh, we came back to uh, the U.S. And what did they say? Why did they leave? It was mainly for uh, economic uh, reasons, uh, better opportunity in, in the U.S. Do you have any siblings? I have one sibling. I have a sister. Her name is Lydia. She lives in Toronto, Canada. Oh, that's right, Lydia. No, if you're watching <laughs> this, ciao. I just love our YouTube community. What a small world. It is. <laughs> that's absolutely. right. And it was a great opportunity to, to meet Esther and Alfred today on the occasion that we happen to be in Achitrezza. That's right. Look where they are in Achitrezza. So Val and his wife have been traveling with their kids and grandkids. And I want to know, did the Sicily bug bite them yet? Well, our grandkids, I have a 12-year-old uh, granddaughter. And we also have five-year-old identical twin granddaughters. So for the granddaughters, it was amazing. All, all they had to do was have either a beach or a swimming pool, and they were set. And a granita. A granita and pasta pomodoro and pizza, and they, they were fine. My uh, older granddaughter, she got to experience some of the, let's say, higher culinary delights of uh, Sicily, and uh, she was all for that. Now, your wife is also Sicilian from the province of Agrigento, Cianciana, and you guys went there this trip. What, what was that like? So we did go to Cianciana. My wife's uh, family is from Cianciana. She was born in Canada. Uh, so we did stay with uh, relatives there. And, and First time? No, we had been there several times before. But a little factoid is that her father had worked in the sulfur mines, which uh, Esther has done a previous episode on Cianciana and the sulfur mines uh, before. And it was a very hard, hard uh, labor to work in the sulfur mines. Yeah, for sure. Uh, do you keep Sicilian, so to speak, in the United States? Uh, we mainly speak English. Um, but my, you do speak Sicilian? Actually, my wife speaks better Sicilian than I do. Wow. I speak better Italian than she does. You, but you grew up speaking Sicilian. In the house? Actually, no. My father wanted me to speak Italian or learn Italian. So my father spoke to me in Italian. My mother spoke to me in English. <laughs> Perfect. And so at home, do you guys speak Italian? Uh, no, we speak English. English. Uh, I mean, we throw in a few Italian words here and there. Well, you got it. The favorites, and, pasta. Oh, absolutely. That's, a, that's an easy one. So even my grandchildren know a few Italian words. And what about cooking? Cooking. Uh, both my wife and I enjoy cooking. And for the most part, we stick to either Italian or Sicilian. What are some of the favorite Sicilian dishes that you make? So, as I was uh, telling you before, Esther, one of my favorite things is uh, pasta con ten tenerumi. So, probably most people don't know what ten tenerumi are, but it's the leafy part of the kogutsa plant. Which is that long, long zucchini. It's a long, long zucchini. And it looks like wild greens. I mean, there's nothing in the United States I can really compare it to. No, that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, there's nothing in the U.S. that comes But it's very it. tender, very tasty. Right. So one of the other things I really like is the zucchini flowers. Ooh. Uh, How do you make those? So one of the things I do with that is make a pizza with zucchini flowers and anchovies on top. Or do pasta with zucchini flowers. So and what, do you put a little bit of flour and then um, lightly fry them or just put them on directly? So for the pasta, I do a little sauce with the zucchini flour, olive oil, some garlic, 
and some water and just saute that until the flowers are, are tender and then just cook the uh, pasta separately and then combine those and uh, of course put a lot of uh, pecorino cheese on top. Of course, perfect. Let me go back to your family for a second. Um, when you were raising your children, uh, did you raise them in a Sicilian household? No, we basically at that time had converted to full American mode. <laughs> <laughs> But you brought them here, so that's but, uh, perfect. We, we did bring them here. They've been here several times. The first time they were like seven, eight years old. So that was their first experience. Of course, we can talk at length about all the treasures and things that are great here in Sicily. Anything um, that you keep coming back to that uh, may disappoint you? And, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about the trash, but anything else that may you know, disappoint you about your ancestral home? Well, we talked about the trash. Um, also, uh, one of the things I, I don't quite understand is the reliance on bottled water for everything. Uh, I mean, I've had the tap water in various locations in Sicily, and to me, it's fine. Um, I don't know the chemical composition of it, but uh, to, to me, it's fine. Um, other things that disappoint me, um, I really can't think of anything right offhand. Uh, years ago, it seems like the traffic was more horrendous than it is now. Now it seems to be a little bit more organized. And, and a little bit more organized, for yeah. sure. With, well, the additional highways have really, really helped in the last 20, 30 years. Right, and the, and the honking has gone down significantly. What? Really? I love the honking. San Giovanni Battista. I think that was two, right? That was, it's two o'clock. Uh, Val, anything you want to add? Uh, no, I just uh, wanted to thank you and uh, Alfred uh, for meeting up with us today. It was a great opportunity and uh, we loved it. Awesome. Thank you so, so much. I just love our YouTube community. It's just becoming smaller and smaller. It was so nice to see Val and Jeannie and you know what? Dal's sister is Linda Noto, who I've been talking to for years. Hopefully she's coming on our May tour. Uh, but also another person that they know is Alfio Tropeo, Galveston, Texas. Imagine that, small community. What about, what about Timmy Reynolds, my pal Timmy, or Chrissy and her husband? Oh my I'll gosh, all what, these Texas, people. Texas, Sean there Lewis. Are, there's a lot of people who are watching right all now. All right, today we are Tejas. giving a shout out to all Sicilians Wait, in you Texas. Know what I'm do of course, we love all Sicilians in every state, but for some reason, a lot of Texas people in our. Circle. What I'm going to do tonight after this program Christine is and Travis. over. Listen to me, okay? I have a bottle of Aguave tequila over there. I'm going to pour a nice shot, and I'm going to stand on a chair, and I'm going to sing. What's the big song that they I sing don't in Texas? Know. Whatever the song is, the Alamo, remember the Alamo, something like that, to all my Texas friends. And by the way, <laughs> when you come over here, I love your bourbon. That's all I want to say. Oh my gosh. All right. We want to say hello to everyone watching, not only in the United States, but also in Australia and Canada. I know a lot of you are in Canada and also in Sicily. How about Uganda? I don't know, Al. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what else do you have to talk about? Okay, listen, there's a, this is a very important thing, okay? Oh, boy. Today, up. this is important, okay, because people are, like, going crazy about this one issue. Today, we went to uh, shopping, and I'm not going to talk about shopping, but... We I will have confirm, another video. I had to confirm how the pasta prices were in Sicily, and I am very relieved to say that at the market that we went to, it was still like one euro and ten cents a kilo. Yeah, but the one we went Thanks to God. the one we went to two days ago, I'm not gonna say any names, it was one forty five. So, so I mean if pasta goes up in price in Sicily, there will be trouble. I'm telling you right now, oh, bread sure. and pasta. But there are some places that are still low, so that's good to know. But and really, then, if you're coming to Sicily or Italy or really anywhere else, just expect to pay a little bit more than you would have you come maybe six months ago. Wait a minute. 
Wait a minute, Monster. In restaurants, for sure. Right now. Car L, drivers. The dollar, the greenback is powerful. My suggestion is when you come here, buy a freaking house. <laughs> you could save 15, 15% out from the euro versus the dollar just six months ago. Believe me when I tell you, you're going to get more bang for the buck. And let me tell you, Al, we get a lot of emails, I'm I'm and a lot of you guys have been asking, does Alfred do stuff like this? Yes, he does. Him and his partner, uh, Massimo, do work on property, on renting, on citizenship, on all of that. This so week there alone, three, three purchases have come in. Three in one week. Usually we get one a month. There's a huge There's interest people, of people wanting to buy or rent Because they're not here. stupid. They realize that you can get more bang for, for your, your dollar buck. right now. And I'm going to tell you one thing, too. Here's a hint from Alfred. It's going to be like this for, a for several more months because the EU is falling apart financially due to the high energy prices because of the Ukrainian war. So who's benefiting? American tourists are benefiting hugely, in my opinion. All right. Okay. On this channel, we take you to a lot of outdoor markets, supermarkets, and things like that. But today, we decided to take you inside of a place called Euronics, where everyday Sicilians shop for everyday items. And Alfred, why did we have to go there? I'm going to tell you why we went there, Esther. Goody. <laughs> as, you, as you noticed, I'm a shirt guy. I like shirts. Not only do I like shirts, as the Italians say here, I like them ironed, okay? <laughs> so when we, when the lady cleans our house, what she does on the side is she irons clothes. Well, that was her original job. Right, she was an ironer or an ironer. Stream but what happened was when she was stress. here last week, my iron fritzed out. Well, what happened, she was ironing. It died. And it went bloop, 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 bloop. And she calls me and she's like, it's hot, but it's not working. I said, is it plugged in? But blah, blah, blah. we tried everything. She goes, is this an old iron? I said, well, it's at least 10 years old. 20 years old. At least 20 since I've been old. here. But I was, and again, to quote my pal Massimo, I was Shocking. shocked when I saw how much irons cost. Wait a sec, take a look. Take a look. <laughs> So I'm at Euronics looking for an iron because I was died. I wanted to show you what they have for iron. $239 for this iron. This looks like a Cadillac. Or how about this one over here? $119. So I'm saying to myself, I don't need something that's going to last me 40 years. I need something I could throw away in like five years. $129. So now I'm getting a little bit bummed. Because now I'm going to shop for price, 129 euros. These are euros, 179 euros, 140 euros, 249 euros. These are irons. So what do I do? I go to the discontinued bin, a good brand, I'm Tech. That guy will suit me just fine. $34.99. You think Sicily is just all a bunch of beautiful markets, fruits, vegetables, things like that, but this is where everyday Sicilians come to to buy their household items. This is a humongous collection of things. There's computers, there's telephones, there's coffee machines, there's washing machines, there's toys over there. Just about anything you need when coming to Sicily. Even cameras, chairs. So there you go. A little bit of a different perspective here of a shop in Sicily. There's even TVs. Computers. And this is Sunday, so it's pretty busy in here. Oh, look at these drones. Been thinking about getting one of these. Oh, look at that. Remember this? DVDs. <laughs> All in Italian, of course. Ooh, Kelle. Soccer player.
vacuum cleaners. Can I tell you about Uronix? It's really cool because First of all, I got my phone there. Anything I need with my computer, any uh, parts or maybe a new uh, charger, which I did need, but of course they had the different holes, so I had to get an adapter. Uh, it's just a really convenient store to get all things, all appliances, all things for the house. I love it when at the checkout counter, just like in every checkout counter, they have little extra stuff. And they had those warm blankets this winter remember i bought one one of those blankets that you plug in so it has literally something for everyone if you watch a past video well first of all your wanix is like best buy a little bit for those of you who know what best yeah. buy is in the state except they have a ginormous uh, selection of household appliances they really do but if you watch any of our videos several years back when i was at the checkout yeah i noticed that they had a small little handheld uh, <laughs> Where conditioner. is it? Where is it? Damn. No, wait a second. I don't know so where let's the give the backstory. Okay, wait a second. She was bitching at me for it was months to get an AC. End of July, like now, right. steaming hot. We're talking a hundred degrees. We had no air conditioning. Then, then, then we had no air conditioning. Only at the mall when we went to the mall, obviously. So I said, Al, we need to go to Uranix. Let's just look for an air conditioning. So we were looking around, we didn't end up buying one that day, but he went to the checkout counter and saw one of those plug-in fans. For five ninety nine, dollars five dollars and ninety nine cents. He goes, here, I got you a fan. The look I hear, on no, a cheap, face. a cheap air conditioner. Here's right. I look on Esther's face, I couldn't believe it, but I had a breakdown and I did buy one. One air conditioner. Yeah for one room and really it's, and it been, a it's been a lifesaver. It's, it's perfect. Really, it's really and we don't have it set very high. We only had it at around 70, what, 70? 70, 72. 70-ish, so But when it's, it's 98 perfect. degrees, 72, believe me, feels. It yeah, feels, and the good thing amazing. about it is too that it has a fan, it has a heater, so it works both ways. Thank you, honey. You know what I miss in the United States that they don't have like they have over here? They have a whole eye, a whole aisle, aisle of panini presses, you know, to make sandwiches. Yeah. Ranging from say. Oh, they have that. Yeah, my mom they, has it, one. It's like, it's like, my mom oh has my one. God, I think she got it at like that'd be a or good something. Christmas present for me. A panini presser. I would like to have one of those. Ooh, okay, yeah. I'll take notes on that. All right. All right. So can I just tell you guys, we still have some sterling silver tornakers left in the United States. Message me. They're beautiful gifts. I know it's too early for Christmas, but how about a birthday? How about a gift for yourself? Wait a so, minute. Are we doing commercials? That, that was a All commercial. Right. I want to tell you something serious right now. Okay? <laughs> because ever since I came back, I've been sore. My knees have been sore, and my all my joints have been sore, really. And I did some research today, and I, I just typed in uh, Google, uh, does humid weather influence joint pain? Yes, it does. And you want to know something? As Esther just says, Humid weather does, in fact, I, I ne would have never thought of it. And of the course. reason is, is you because you raining? have to stay, you have to stay with a lot of fluid, or else it locks up. It locks up on you. So I've been drinking water by the gallon, and I have to say this: since I started yesterday, uh, I'm feeling a lot better. Well, that, it's course, also you're a little bit jet lagged, so yeah. But also too, the uh, CBD cream that I talked about last week. Uh, has really helpful, helped me, and also my evening glass of uh, tequila now has been... That's our new drink, So tequila. basically that, right now, you know, right now, that's the all. The one thing we couldn't find anywhere is some margarita uh, mix. Does anybody know how to make margarita from scratch, margarita, margarita mix? From scratch. You cannot find it in Sicily. Or even whiskey sour mix. Yeah. There's got to be... Although, we did get some lime soda today. So maybe that'll work. It's not going to work like margarita. I need to find something. Or no. else we're going to have to start bringing it in. <laughs> More stuff. Peanut butter. All right, so... Dunkin' Donuts coffee. We do talk about the little, little fluff. things. Fluff. That we miss here. That we miss What else? Here, yeah. The trident gum. Trident Trust gum. Trust me. 
I can live without all that stuff. But, you know, those little things of comfort, they're always great. All right, I want to hear where you are watching from. And uh, listen, we really, really appreciate you being here. If you don't know, we come to you on Wednesdays and Sundays. Of course, uh, we do also all types of videos. Hey, I'm almost done with the Palermo piece. Uh, right. so that's very exciting. And uh, just want to say thank you. And if you want to support this channel, please consider becoming a community member for $1.99 a month, $1.99 a month. It just helps support our channel. Every few uh, weeks, I put up something very private for the community, a little extra, extra. So that's one of the ways. And, you know, it helps us upgrade our equipment get some of the apps uh, that I use to make these videos and other things. You know, we've been, we, we have a bunch of uh, nice little, uh, we like doing the B-roll and showing it to you, you know, small little vignettes. I found three places that we're going to be doing in Catania that I didn't really even know existed. I don't really want to talk about it until after we have them, but there are three things that we're going to videotape in Catania. One of them we've talked about before, and that is the World War II Museum. That is a must have to do before the end of the summer. But did Period, you know, end okay, of sentence. If you want to talk about one, I'll talk about one. Did you know that there are underground caverns? Yes. I never knew that. And that you can go on a tour of them? I never knew that either. Caverns. Caverns, underground yeah. caverns that go back to the time of Christ. Alfred, we, I went with Katya. One year. That was at the bottom of one place, but this is a, yeah. a separate tour. So, so many, uh, you know, Catania, I keep saying, is one of those not too visited by uh, tourists. So, you know, you think you're going to land in Catania and then leave, but downtown Catania is definitely put that on your list. A lot to do there. Um, here's what I want to say about Catania is the same thing I want to say about Setacusa. It's the same thing I want to say about Palermo or Sheflu or Messina, is that these are truly magnificent yeah. cities that have so much culture to them that it will blow you away. So you need to come to Sicily. Things dating back from the Greek, the Roman, it's, it's all, crazy, right? all the nominations. Stop and think about 2,500 years old stuff and it's still in existence. It's just, it blows me away. Anyways, I want to thank you for today's video, Esther. <laughs> that was fun. With it's so nice Val being with Esther Jeannie. again. I know, nice to have she you back. She hasn't cooked for me once, though. Do you know what he's been having? Well, listen, first of all, I love cooking. But every time we go to the supermarkets, he takes a look at the lunch takeout items, and he has to have a lasagna or a stuffed pepper. I'm like, Alfred, I'll make it for you. No, I want it now. No, no why actually, do I say that? You're right. He said, I don't want you to cook in this thank heat. Thank you. Isn't he you know, sweet? Who the hell wants to put on the oven in the hot weather? Exactly. Because if I don't watch myself, she's going to say to me, why don't you put on the barbecue grill? Smart to the stick caruso. The barbecue caruso. grill that he bought. We don't use it that much. It's not an electric one. It doesn't have gas. You have to put the coal in there. It's a real pain in the ass to it's fire It's basically up. a plant holder right now. It's a nice plant for, holder. For the three past three years. Anyway, anyway thank you thing. for being here. We love you and keep in touch. Leave us a comment if you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in another video of you, me and Cicely. Sabenedita. Ciao. Ciao.